therapist. And just to give you a, sm a small bit of background on Dr. Maniscalco, he's been in private practice specializing in cardiovascular disease since 1976. He is regarded as an opinion leader, an innovator, and an educator in cardiovascular medicine. And he served on the American College of Cardiology and national level. So um, he's also a member of the American Medical Association. And he got introduced, this is what I'm excited to know more about. He got introduced to ProTandem several years ago, but he did his research and we're gonna hear about that research. <laughs> Um, before he started recommending it to his patients, he's now got thousands of people on tandem and seeing the benefits of activating their body to fight against free radical damage, which is at the forefront of every disease. So can I call you Benny? Is it okay, Dr. Benny or just Benny? What would you like me to call you? I think Benny is a wonderful name. My parents gave it to me, so you can use it. That's okay. Cool. No problem. Okay, because my name is Gronia, and that's what my parents gave me, and I don't say it very much. Gronia, I like that. It's yeah, it's beautiful, but when you see it written down, it's it's yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hard to understand what it is. Very good, very good. So, Dr. Maniscalco, I would love if you could just share with us um, how you actually got to hear about because you mu you must in your you know, practice and things like that. You must have come across so many products that people kind of wandered into you and said, hey, Dr. Manskalka, this would really help your patients. Had you known about oxidative stress before and, and did it really kind of tweak your interest the minute you heard that there was this product? And how many years ago was it that you'd actually heard about Protandum? Well, I'd, I'd be happy to share it with you. So as we go along, I'm a I'm a, a very liberal kind of speaker, so anytime you all have a question that you need for me to answer, because you just can't wait to hear the answer, uh, I'll be happy to do so. Let me just give you a little bit more background on me. I, uh, in my practice of cardiology, is what you would call an interventionalist, an invasive cardiologist who was um, doing um, angioplasties, you know, where you put little balloons and arteries and open up the arteries and then we put stents in there to keep the arteries open. Mm -hmm. I say this to tell you that as a um, person who was fortunate enough to be involved with cardiology when this whole technology exploded of uh, intervention, I was up day and night in the hospital. So I did not necessarily spend a great deal of time looking at the literature on cellular research. Um, it's too, too much uh, work going on in the hospital day and night. But a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. I retired from the laboratory in about 2001. And uh, a young man who I knew uh, came by my office. Uh, I'd known him from one of those many MLM things that were pitched at me over the years. And he said to me, Benny, I finally have something that I know you're going to want. It's a product that's going to change the entire world and the way you practice medicine. And I simply said to him, Satan, get out of here. And uh, he, uh, he said, no, no, no. You've got to really pay attention this time. I know I've brought you some other things that uh, weren't so good. So I said, okay, so what's, what's the deal? So he tells me about this little yellow pill. And I say to him, look, I, I just don't believe any of this stuff about the pill. Um, but tell you what I'll do, because you're my friend, I'll read the literature you brought me. And he brought me a bunch of literature, which he didn't know what was in it, didn't understand it. So he brought it to me. So that was my first exposure to the little pill you and I know today as ProTandem. So how yes. many was that? Oh, that was seven years ago. Okay. Six years ago, six years ago. So um, I am the kind of fellow that uh, if I put my name out there, uh, I want to be sure that I'm not on a very squeaky ground. So I read all of the literature he had, which at the time on ProTandem were about seven peer-reviewed articles. Uh, so I went to uh, the uh, PubMed and started reading more about oxidative stress research itself. And I'll, I'll bring you full circle with this. Yes, I knew about oxidative stress. 50 years ago, it'll give you an idea of how long I've been around. I was in my first medical school 
a biochemistry lecture listening to a Nobel laureate present data on how we human beings make cellular energy. And in, in that course, I'll, I'll, I'll dummy it down for us all. He said, you take in oxygen, you combust it with food, and you make a thing called ATP, and that's our energy, and we now understand it precisely. And then he said something that didn't mean a thing to me till about 50 years later, almost 50 years. And that was, we haven't figured out yet how to deal with the side products from the production of energy. And we call those things free radicals because those chemicals that are made are unstable. And as a consequence, uh, they're always looking for a place to hook up with another molecule. And if we don't neutralize them, uh, they cause damage. So there's oxidative stress in a nutshell. Uh, from the time you're born and I'm born, uh, we breathe in oxygen. And even before that, we're taking in oxygen from mom and we're producing uh, oxidative stress. That is, we are metabolizing oxygen, combusting it, and making energy. And then as we go through life, we're exposed to more and more things that cause us to make free radicals. And so that's what we really call <laughs> Uh, a problem because oxidative stress to define it for you a little bit differently is the ex excess of free radicals over antioxidants which we use to neutralize them so that was my first introduction and I said wow well this is impressive this fella who gave the biochemistry lecture won the Nobel and along comes another fella named Joel McCord who studies with his first uh, with this first professor I had at Duke Uni University Medical School, and uh, he was going to solve the problem of how we deal with the free radicals. And he uh, rationalized that why do we get all this oxygen from the plants that we use in our atmosphere and breathe and live on? Why aren't they getting problems? So he starts looking at various plant lives and looks at a whole host of of uh, living organisms and says, wow, they all have this one molecule in here and a couple of three others that are very powerful in neutralizing the free radicals. And so he discovered that uh, there was a master protein in our cell that helped regulate uh, what our cell was gonna do in terms of what molecules to produce. So let me, let me take it one step further. If, you, if you're making free radicals and uh, you neutralize them because you have plenty of antioxidants, no foul, no harm. But the minute you can't neutralize that free radical, it attaches any place it can in your cell. It could it attach to the membrane of the cell. It can attach to the mitochondria. It can attach to the chromosomes. It can attach to the nucleus. And when it does, it creates a situation in which there is a foreign substance which the cell recognizes as being foreign and we get an injury. And the minute you get that injury, the cell must do something to contain it, stop it, uh, and make it go away. So it turns some of its machinery into making molecules which are part of the inflammation reaction. So let me say that again. If you have an injury, the body will always make proteins that are going to contain the injury and repair it. That's called inflammation. And inflammation always, always ends up in a scar. And that means you and I, as we're having this talk tonight, are making scar as we sit here because we're breathing oxygen, we're combusting it, we're making free, radical, free radicals, and we have a response in our cell trying to contain them. But the minute we can't neutralize them all, then we start getting the scar, and that is called disease. So at the cellular level, we call that aging. At the macro level, we call that disease because every time we make a scar, we replace a normal cell. And if we replace enough normal cells, we injure the organ 
And if we injure the organ, then we have things like heart failure, kidney failure, strokes, heart attacks, et cetera, cancer. So in short, what we really have is the beginning of all disease comes from this whole process of injury occurring by virtue of the fact that we're alive. Having said all that, I learned that before I went back to this young man who told me about this product. And I said, well, if it in fact cuts down on inflammation, then I must be able to measure that. And it turns out that there's some laboratory tests that we can run. And I took the first 100 patients that I gave this product to, measured their levels of inflammation and the inflammatory proteins in their blood, gave them the little yellow pill, and remeasured in two to three months. Okay. I didn't know what I'd find, but here's what I found. Every one of them dropped their inflammation levels. Every one of them dropped all of their oxidative stress levels, therefore, by taking the medication and turning on a process which you now know as NRF2 activation. So what Dr. McCord discovered was that there are natural occurring life forms and plants and foods that if put in the right combination, we will be able to turn on uh, the mechanism through the NRF2 molecule to make huge amounts, millions per second of antioxidants, which we were not making at that point. And that is what stopped the inflammation. Therefore, it stopped the scar formation. Therefore, it's delaying disease and retarding the whole process of aging. So that's how I got into it. I, I tested all these patients and to date, to date, probably in our practice, we've had somewhere between 3,500 and 4,500 patients on the product and I recommend it to every single living human being who walks through my door. Wow. I'm just going to try and mute everyone and then unmute you again because some people have joined. Okay. And then Benny, can you unmute again and we'll see whether that is any better. Sure. Sorry about that. Um, that's amazing. So a couple of things that I was intrigued to hear about. So you studied maybe what around a hundred people or just some of your patients and have you, yep. No, I studied the first hundred before I ever got involved with recommending this. I okay. wanted to see for myself, not what someone else had written or done, uh, what the response would be of inflammation and inflammation markers in the blood to taking protandum. So I did that the first hundred patients. Wow, and you saw a decrease in every one of them. So every when, single one of them. So when every single one of them. Say, you know that it works 100% of the time if people take it correctly, because we have lots of people, and you probably get it in your practice, you know, everybody's different. So, you know, we have lots of, I have some people that say after three days, after two days, they can feel something. And I'm like, really? Like for me, it was, you know, a month, but ideally it was five months before I really, because I'm 50, five months before I really felt lots of things. But my husband was two and a half months. So when people say to me, literally after a night or two nights, they have felt something, they've had the best night's sleep, but everyone's on their own journey, you know, and everyone's got different levels of, of oxidative stress happening at the same time. Well, that's correct. And so depending on your level of oxidative stress, your response could be profound within a short period of time, um, and or it could be very gradual in a short period of time. So I'm not surprised that you have heard that or or gotten the variant variance you have from uh, uh, the various uh, individuals you've talked to. But I can tell you that uh, it makes sense from a, a biologic uh, point of view that uh, all of us have different levels of stress, uh, of oxidative stress, and uh, all of us will respond uh, a little bit differently. But we have a bell-shaped curve. I would say that if you look at the studies McCord did, uh, you remember he said that the T-bars reduced uh, considerably in his patients that he studied, and there was about a 30 or 40% reduction within 30 days. So 
that's on average. But I think some people respond quickly, some people respond later. So a little birdie told me that you didn't have a very nice detox <laughs> when you started well, on it. And a little, yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, I had a, uh, I've got a very highly allergic condition. And uh, it took me uh, a few years ago, I was in the hospital and no one could figure out what it was. But nevertheless, recognizing as an allergic state, um, for those of you who are pedantic enough, enough to want to know, it's called uh, primary, primary eosinophilia. And there's a molecule, the, the, you've heard of gamma globulin, there's another globulin called IgE. The normal level of most laboratories is below 200. Mine was 30,000. Wow. Um, I took Rotandum and I started and stopped Rotandum uh, three different times because I had violent reactions of the GI tract uh, and it was not a pleasant scene. Uh, finally, my nurse practitioner uh, said, okay, put on your big boy pants and take this stuff. So I put on my big boy pants and toughed it out for two weeks and then it all went away. So six years later, I take it daily. Don't even know I take it. Uh, my levels have dropped uh, virtually to zero, uh, and uh, to normal, I should say, not zero. And I've, I've done very well with it. So I think uh, that little birdie gave you uh, inside information. <laughs> and that's the thing, because I have some people, and I know there's people on the call here that, you know, have had some kind of reaction at the very beginning, or they found, you know, you know, tummy upsets and, you know, frequency to the bathroom and things like that. And I just really encourage them you know even if it's a half just keep going drink loads of water and you know your body is fighting to try and get some of this stuff that was dormant in your cells like you know whether it was medication or whether it's an autoimmune that they have because my husband has an autoimmune and i never told him that why he was feeling so yucky was because of protanum because he would have stopped taking it well, so, I think when someone has a, a reaction, they, they, they obviously think I have a highly uh, allergic reaction to this particular product and it's making me sick. When in fact the opposite is occurring, what it's doing is detoxifying you. You've got an excessive amount of uh, free radicals and it is going around, it's turned on the NRF2 protein, which sends the message to the nucleus to make the proper antioxidants and you're making now millions of antioxidants, which you were, were not making, and you're neutralizing all of these uh, free radicals. And so that's called detoxification. So I think you can give them a different slant on it. You're actually getting better, though you feel horrible. And that sounds ridiculous, but it's actually true. That's, that's really, really good. So can you explain to me about, because I know when Dr. Um, Mark Gordon came over here, one of the big things for him was when he saw it in the Heart Association Journal, he, his eyes pricked up being a cardiologist and just went, wow, they don't actually really talk about snake oil. So there must be some truth to this product because if it's in the Heart Association, I need to start taking a, a good look at this. Well, Mark is a wonderful colleague, and uh, he's done a wonderful job in spreading the word and the good news about protanum and oxidative stress. And it's, a, it's always a, a great, humbling experience to be around, Mark. Um, what, what he was referring to is the Ohio State Heart Study. It was printed in the, uh, the journal Circulation, which is uh, one of the main journals of the cardiovascular community. And the study went something like this. If you took, if you, you all know that bypass surgery has been in vogue since the late 60s, and uh, it is a mainstay of our therapy in patients who have such critical blockages in their heart that we provide a, a new route for their blood to flow to their heart, and that's called a bypass. Well, it, bypasses are predominantly done with veins, and more and more we're using arteries, but the study at Ohio State was done with veins. You know, if you think about your body, arteries carry the blood away from your heart that is highly saturated with oxygen. So it's got high oxygen content. Veins, on the other hand, uh, are in a low oxygen uh, environment because they're bringing blood back to the heart 
that uh, has had all of its oxygen removed. Well, they reasoned if that's true, and if it's true that oxidative stress causes this inflammation, which is what we see as the root cause of the plaque in the arteries, I wonder if we treated this vein in some fashion, we could prevent the clot or the plaque. So they took a vein and they incubated the vein, the kind of vein we use in bypass surgery, in a low oxygen tension and found that there was no reactive inflammatory production of plaques. And then they took the same vein and put it in a very high oxygen environment. And lo and behold, it got the plaques that we see in everyday coronary disease or vascular disease. But the, the hooker was the third time they looked at the vein, they treated it with protandum and they prevented the production of that plaque. Now that, that's a most astonishing uh, discovery for a cardiologist or for any physician who understands um, oxidative stress and cardiovascular medicine. So when I saw that article, I simply said to myself, this is the greatest discovery about cardiovascular medicine and how we can help uh, in my career. And to date, I will maintain that though we've unraveled the chromosome and DNA and so forth, uh, the greatest discovery in my career is the discovery of the NRF2 pathway and the ability to turn on the mechanisms to produce antioxidants and prevent the inflammatory response. So um, what Mark told you was uh, that it was a, a hallmark study for him as well. Uh, and so I, I can tell you that had we known this or I'd known it uh, before I got into this uh, area of, uh, of knowledge, I would have treated every patient who had bypass surgery with protandum. Now understand, I treat every patient or recommend to every patient and every non-patient that I meet that they take protandum. Why? Because if you followed my attempt to share my uh, knowledge, not my passion, my knowledge, if in fact inflammation leads to a scar, and if in fact we can prevent that, and if scar is called aging at the cellular level, we ought to be able to extend life. And in fact, that is exactly what was proven in an NIH, uh, the Division of Aging study, where animals were treated uh, with and without protandum in various groups. And those uh, animals, they were, they were um, mice, they were treated with protandum, had an extension of their life, which was significant. In human terms, it would have been along the order of 25 to 30 years. In uh, the mouse's term, it was a whole lot less. <laughs> so I, I just got to go back to what you said, like Washington State University have said, you know, NRF2 may well become the most preventative and extraordinary discovery in the history of medicine. So you're saying that as well, like, I mean, you've been around when there's been stents stem cells, all these other incredible discovery and med medical discoveries, and you still believe that this NRF2 pathway, in your eyes, has <laughs> been the, the greatest discovery? Well, um, you know, I've got a colleague who once said to me that everything that's ever been known is already known and discovered. Uh, things like stents and bypass surgery and so forth are therapeutic interventions disease is well advanced, well established, and you're trying to intervene to prevent a disaster. What is so important to understand about the discovery of the cellular mechanisms by which we uh, uh, neutralize free radicals is that um, it is preventative. It, it is, you're not able to ever stop this process that we know of yet but we've discovered the mechanism by which every disease state occurs. And if you've done that, then as we keep peeling back the onion of these reactions, we're gonna find ways in which to prevent the progression or perhaps arrest the disease of almost every state uh, condition that we run across. This is certainly proven out 
in my career, we're making enormous advances in finding proteins involved in this process. For instance, uh, Alzheimer's disease, sarcoid disease, and other diseases, that if we can block that reaction, uh, we can either prevent the disease, pre prevent the progression, and increase the longevity and well-being of the, of the patient. So I maintain that the discovery of these cellular pathways, uh, uh, particularly the NRF1, NRF2 pathway, uh, are the most important ones of my career. There may be another one that comes along after I'm long gone, and I'm sure there will be. Uh, but today, in my view, that's the most important one I've ever seen. Wow, that, that's amazing. And I have to say, when, it's funny when people watch the ABC investigative report, different things stay with them. And for me, I was a healthy person when I started on the NRF2 you know, activator. But one of the biggest things that I saw was when that doctor or the scientist at the end said, I don't want to look back when I'm 80 and think, man, I should have been on this thing all the time. And that is what went in my head because people say to me, but I'm not sick. I know who could really benefit from, from your product, though. I've got somebody who's really ill and I'm like, it's for everybody. It's, we can't say that it can treat, cure or prevent. But when I go out in the sun, I put on sunscreen because it's gonna give my skin the best protection. It's not gonna say that I definitely won't burn, but it's definitely gonna give me the best protection against not having anything. So to me, this is my insurance, <laughs> my, you know, my personal insurance. So um, is that what you say to people as well? You know, that it, it's kind of like an insurance policy. Well, <clears throat> that's, that's a good way to look at it. Um, if you accept the fact that Dr. Handler has, as I said, clearly delineated the pathway by which we make energy, and if you accept that as being incontrovertible fact, which it is, and that we do make side products, much like burning the gas in our car, we make carbon monoxide, which is lethal, then you must accept the fact that from the minute you're conceived, and you are exposed to oxygenation for survival and growth, growth and survival, then you must begin at the beginning to take a product that will help you maximize your ability to prevent free radical attachment and produce injury and disease. And so we have many patients who are pregnant who have taken the product and done beautifully and well. We've got many children who take the product thousands. We've got many adults who take it. But remember, once you have established disease, uh, it's going to be ongoing. But we do know at any age, at any age that you start activating NRF2 and producing larger amounts of antioxidants, you're going to delay the progression of further disease and your sense of well-being and health will be enhanced without question. Wow. So it is a product for everybody at all ages. And I mean, for me, I find this next generation of wellness so exciting because um, I'd love to hear where you think this may be in 10 years time. It was funny, Dr. Viglione was saying, you know, in her eyes, she can just imagine that maybe in 10 years time, people will be able to walk into their doctor and the doctor will have his thermostat, his you know, temperature, your blood pressure, and then we'll have some kind of a machine or some kind of a quick thing that will have a really accurate test of your oxidative stress. Well, we have that capability today, but I, I think the doctor was right. I think that uh, uh, the demand will be created by, by spreading the word. It's no different than when we say to everyone, take an aspirin a day, Although in Australia, they published something recently. They're trying to debunk that. I, I refute that study. But in any event, um, several thousand doctors across the world took aspirin and the marked decrease in prevention of cardiac events was so enormous that the, the body of, uh, of the medical profession and scientists said, take, a, uh, take an aspirin every day. So in that sense, it's preventative. Aspirin is a far more lethal drug than taking a natural occurring 
combination of five foods, as in pro tandem, uh, than, than aspirin. So I would, I would say to you that in the future, the demand that the public makes uh, is going to be um, accompanied by some entrepreneur who's going to say, well, if we're going to have a million, two million, five million, 20 million, 100 million people on this product, and we want to know about their oxidative stress levels, I'm going to invent a little uh, gadget to measure it. And there's one of them out today, uh, but in any event, I agree with the doctor. Fantastic. Fantastic. And then the exciting thing is, because we're pioneering now something that nobody knows about, you know, when that comes along, our product is going to be the longest, most established, science-backed, you know, the first, kind of like with Nike and things like that. When you look at analogies of sports brands, I believe that, you know, they'll be looking and people will say, wasn't that, is yours an NRF2 activator? I've seen everything written in the news or on the, the newspaper about this. So we're pioneering. Yeah, I, I think that's true. I think what you're talking about is the branding process. We're in the process of creating a brand and the brand will be created by the testimonials and the mouth to mouth marketing of humans who are the best marketeers in the world to tell their neighbor, their friend, their family, what has helped them with their health and their, and their problems. So, I think that branding process is well underway. I think in the next five to 10 years, uh, the medical profession uh, across the world uh, will embrace um, the use of any product uh, that especially that is natural, that turns on the body's own mechanisms, not a supplement, it turns on the body's natural mechanisms to fight disease. So I, I think that's an accurate statement. I, I, I see it coming. Um, it's just a matter of time. That's so exciting. Look, I'm going to stop the recording and thank you so much. But we have got, you know, nearly 60 people on the line that are going to want some questions. Maybe if you could just stay on for a few minutes. So I want to thank you so much, Dr. Maniscalco, for that amazing information, incredible information. It's, it's yeah. It, I know well, you're more at the right time with the right product. Well, you're, you're very welcome. I appreciate you uh, sharing this time with you, all of you, Thank all of you who are on the call. You.